So this is a lesson about scatter plots and lines of best fit. And the first question is like, what even is a scatter plot? What does that have anything to do with anything? And what a scatter plot is, is essentially in real life when you're collecting data, like this could be, you know, years or something, and this could be anything random, bunny, you know, population, maybe in the thousands, you know, times uh, thousands, right? And in real life, again, when you're collecting data, it could be sort of sporadic, like, you know, oh, we definitely see over time an increase in bunny population, but it's not perfectly linear. And so how do you handle that? You know, in earlier lessons, when you're learning about how to graph a line, usually the slope between the points is identical. You know, you learned that the slope might be up three over two, up three over two, and then you graph this perfect line. But what about when it's random? What about when it's quote unquote scattered? Again, that's why this is called scatter plots, right? This is what you were looking at. And the first thing that you need to sort of know is that usually there, there's kind of a correlation or a trend. And this first picture I've, I've drawn here, we can agree that obviously, roughly, over time, you see kind of a positive uh, correlation. And that's what this is. This is. This example here would be a positive correlation for a scatter plot. Now, obviously, you can probably guess what a negative cor correlation looks like. You know, so basically for negative correlation, you might have something like this. Again, you might have, you know, time down here and you might have your savings in dollars. And let's say you're a bad saver. And over time, you start off with like, you know, hey, I have a bunch of money up here. But then like slowly I spend it, you know, I go to the mall with my friends and it's going down. This is definitely a negative correlation. Negative correlation. And it doesn't have to be like 100%, again, an exact negative slope. But over time, roughly, you see that this is kind of heading downhill. And then the sort of the last option, so you had a positive correlation, a negative correlation. And the last option is what's called basically no correlation. You know, and for an example of no correlation, I have no idea. Maybe you could do something like... Um, you know, it, I don't know, age and the likelihood of playing video games. You know, I, I apparently, I heard the rumor is that now adults play video games. So maybe as you get older, you know, there's just really no pattern. And you can kind of see, well, you're trying to look at it. Well, is this positive? Is this negative? This one would be no correlation. There is no correlation. So that's it. So the first thing when you're dealing with this stuff is that, hey, Looking at the data set, is this positive, negative, or no correlation? But then from there, another big issue is, let's say you do have this scatter plot. A lot of people want you to find the line of best fit. And now to, to find the line of best fit, let's go back to this. Let's go back to time and the bunny population thing. Uh, bunnies maybe in the thousands, right? And again, we agreed that that was kind of a positive correlation. So this is where it gets kind of weird. This is what's sort of subjective about <laughs> excuse me, this topic. And finding the line of best fit is essentially your job is to try to find the exact line that best matches this data, right? It's essentially a trend. And and step one of creating the line, first of all, before we even do this, you need to know that if I asked a thousand people to find the uh, line of best fit for this data, you might get a thousand different lines. They should be close, but you might get a thousand answers. So this is subjective. And the reason it is, is step one is to pick two points. And let me make my pen red here. Looking at this data, you're supposed to pick two points that most accurately depicts the overall pattern. So let's say I did a terrible job. Let's say I said, hey, looks to me like this point and this point. If I connect them with a line, that would be the best, most closely, you know, represented line that that it looks like this data. That's totally wrong. Okay. That, that's just dumb. So I messed that up, right? Okay, but then let's say you're smarter than me, so you say, okay, that guy, that guy has no understanding of what's going on. And then you would say, okay, well, I'll pick basically, I would say this point and maybe, I don't know, this point. And you can see if you connected these two points, honestly, that's pretty good. That's pretty close. That's why it's called the line of best fit. There's nothing exact about this. And so, so if you did these and maybe another kid did, you know, this point and this point, it, you know, it would be close. You could see how it would be close. So now phase two of the operation, phase one is we picked two points and I'm going to make these values up. Let's say this is like five and 10 and this is like, you know, 15 and 30, totally made up points. Now the question is from these two points, how do you calculate a line of best fit? And that goes back to an earlier topic. Really now all you're doing is finding the equation of a line given two points. So we're going to take these two points 
delete everything else on the screen, and using those two points, we're gonna calculate the line of best fit. Okay, so here I have my two points, and now remember, when you try to find the equation of a line given two points, the equation of any line is always the same thing, y equals mx plus b. And your job was to find m and b, that's pretty much your only goal. Once you do that, you're done finding this line of best fit, or this equation of a line given two points. And so the bummer is, this is slope, m is slope, and b is the y-intercept. And in this case, you always write over here, you write m equals and b equals, because you're going to find them, uh, and then when you find them, your job is done. And unfortunately, I have no idea what the slope is, and I have no idea what the y-intercept is, so like, I guess I'm... I guess I'm done. I guess I can't solve this. You know, if you actually remember back, you can find one of these given two points. And you can find the slope given two points using the slope formula, which was, if you remember, probably not, but if you do, it's y minus y. So it's 30 minus 10 over x minus x, which is 15 minus 5. So then you get 20 over 10. So your slope would be 2. So we can fill that in. Okay, we're halfway done. All we need is these two things, and we already have half of our stuff. Okay, but so what? So now how do I find my b? The first thing you do is you basically plug in that slope. So we have y equals 2x plus b. And now, okay, I'm still stuck. I can't, I can't find b. Well, what if you had an x and a y? Could you plug them in and solve for b? And the answer is, of course, totally. And we do have an x and a y. In fact, we have two sets. We have an x here and a y here, or we have an x here and a y here, and the question is which one do you use? You can use either one. It totally does not matter if you use this point here or this point here, you're gonna get the exact same answer for b. So let's pick, I guess we'll do this one here. So let's go 10 equals two times five, because that was my x value, right? Plus b, then you get 10 equals 10 plus b, minus my 10 over, minus my 10 over. It looks like b is actually zero. And now you're done. You can come over here and write y equals 2x plus zero. In other words, y equals 2x. And remember, that whole deal, what we just did was we found the equation of a line, more specifically, the equation of a line that is the line of best fit for the scatter plot that we had. And so again, these are a little frustrating just because imagine trying to grade these if you were the teacher, because every single kid would get a different equation for the line. But that's how they do it in real life. Sometimes math actually applies to real life. And finding the line of roughly the best fit is something that you totally do um, uh, in the field. I hope that helps, and I hope you enjoyed the video.